Good morning or afternoon, everybody, and thank you for attending uh, today's webinar. Today's topic is going to be working with P6 Professional 15.1. Today's presenters are going to be uh, myself, Dan Beck, and Adam Baker. Uh, we're going to walk you through some steps and processes of working with uh, P6 Pro 15.1. Before we get started, we have a couple of housekeeping items we'd like to go over. Uh, first and foremost, all call-in phones will be muted automatically in order to preserve the quality of the audio for all attendees. We are recording this webinar, so we don't like to get any background noise as part of it because we will be sharing the recording with all registrants and attendees. At any time during today's webinar, if you have any questions, you could submit them through the questions box in your GoToWebinar box. Obviously, time permitting, we'll try and answer as many questions as possible. We will also be putting together a question and answers log as part of our follow-up processes. We will send that out with a copy of the slideshow presentation and a link to the recording of the webinar if you feel like sharing those with any of your colleagues. We just want to go over the safe harbor statement real quick, show it to you that the statements are not official Oracle perspective, but they are uh, our views on the software and only our views. If any of you are new to our company, give you a little background on DR McNatty and MLM. MLM is our hosting partner. Uh, we provide services for not only hosting, but also for uh, Primavera products and a few additional products that are listed in here as well too. Our agenda for today's webinar, we're going to go over and review downloading the software directly from Oracle eDelivery. We're going to go over working with databases and the different types of databases that are available with P6. We're going to walk you through the steps on how to install the software once you download it from eDelivery. We're also going to go through and walk you through the steps on how to create a new SQL database. We're going to show you how to connect it to a P6 database, and we're also going to show you how to connect to an EPPM database using the new Oracle Cloud Connect. In case some of you are wondering why the newest version is 15.1, we wanted to add this slide in here and give you a perspective from Oracle as to how their versioning numbers are going to look for all products moving forward. They're going to base it on the year and then obviously the release. So this will be nice to share with people wondering why it went from 8.4 to 15.1 with P6. So downloading the software, I included a link to the edelivery.oracle.com. This will take you directly to this page. You would sign in and register. If you already have an Oracle sign in, you would just go in and use that. If not, we can go in and we can create account. It is free to create an Oracle account. If you have current support or maintenance, you can also find support directly through this site as well too once you create an account. Prior to downloading the software, you're gonna to have to agree to the terms and conditions of Oracle. You're gonna to have to accept the export restrictions that are part of the licensing. Once you get through these two processes, you will go in and click continue. Now it's taking you to your applications or your product pack. There's going to be a drop down list to select your product pack for any type of Primavera. We're going to select Primavera applications. Once we do that, it's going to give us our platform. Most people nowadays should be running a 64 bit, but it also does have an option for a 32 bit application as well too. Once you select the Primavera applications and then your Windows platform, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to select Go. That's going to bring up the options for Primavera applications. For this instance, we are going to select Primavera P6 Professional Project Management 15.1. If you are downloading EPPM, you would select the Enterprise Project Portfolio Management. Once we selected the Prima or the P6 Professional 15.1, it's going to bring up our downloads. 
For local installs, what we suggest is downloading the documentation, the database setup, and the applications. These three can be downloaded simultaneously. Obviously, depending on your computer and your strength of your internet connection, it could take a few minutes for this information to download. Once all three downloads are complete, it's going to ask you if you want to open or save. These are going to be your zip files. We're going to click Save. Once they are downloaded, you're going to have your zip files in your Downloads folder. Once we unzip those files, it's going to create your P6 Pro Release 15.1 application, your P6 Release 15.1 database, and your documentation. We added a couple slides here on working with databases because this is where decision time will come into play. Are you going to run a single database? Do we need to run multiple local databases? Do we have a local SQL database that needs to be upgraded? For your IT support, are we going to create an initial SQL Express database? Do the client installation using SQL Express database? Or are you going to want to connect to an EPPM or web database? And one of the items we're going to go through today is show you how you can connect to an EPPM database using Oracle Cloud Connect. This slide is going to show you the supported local databases. We have SQLite, Oracle Express, and SQL Express. It'll give you the versioning of P6 the supported group server databases. And on the bottom, P6 Pro can also connect to an EPPM database, either a direct connection across a LAN or WAN, or through a P6 Professional Cloud Connect. This slide is going to show you what databases are supported through P6 Pro 15.1, either using the Oracle applications or Microsoft SQL. Working with Microsoft SQL databases, we have five distinct steps that are required. First, we're going to download Microsoft SQL. We're going to install SQL. We have to go in and configure it. We're going to create our P6 database, create our alias, and configure our alias for P6. Once we have those steps complete, it'll allow us to sign in and start using P6. Now we're going to walk you through the processes of installing the software. We have all the downloads that we have before. We've unzipped them. And now we're going to go into our folders that we received from Oracle eDelivery. First thing we're going to do is we're going to double click our setup. We're going to click run. From there, it's going to open up our Java applications. Depending on the versioning of Java that you are currently running, it may need to be updated to a newer version. And there will be a few screens that we'll have to go through to get through the Java portion. We're going to click Install on Java. Once we've set the Java all up, we are ready to install P6. It's going to give you two options for installing the software. Our setup type is either going to be typical or advanced. Typical, this option is to install or upgrade P6 Professional with an existing EPPM or professional database. If you are running an older version of P6, we can upgrade it at this point as well. With the advanced, we always leave a little note that do not go here unless you know why you might want the schema and administrative functionality on a local machine. For this instance, we're going to select typical. At this point, it's going to bring up the setup wizard that will install the software. When it's ready to install, we're going to click the install button and it's going to go through the processes of setting up your P6 Pro.
The next item I'm going to ask you to do is to set up your database configuration. We're going to select our driver type. This instance, we're running SQL Server, SQL Express. And then we're going to click Finish to complete the setup wizard. Now we have to walk through the processes of setting up databases. We're going to set up a brand new database within P6. We're going to go to our download folder that we unzipped previously to the R15.1 database folder. And we're going to select the DB setup. What we'll do is we will double click on DB setup. It's going to give us a couple of options to either install a new database, upgrade an existing database, and it's going to give us our server type. For this instance, we're going to select Microsoft SQL Server. When we get into the Oracle Cloud Connect, we're going to get into the Oracle server type. It wants to ask for its connection information. The default SQL database administrator username should be SA. You also need to know the password and the name of the SQL database, or you can use local host. We recommend that you leave the port defaulted to 1433, and then you would type in your database name. We're going to enter the name for our new database, and in this example, we're going to use PMDB underscore sample. We're going to leave the database code page set at the default. And as just a little information, you're going to re resist the temptation to select either Latin, Chinese, Russian, or Japanese. Just leave it as database default. At that point, we're going to click Next. And we're going to get into creating our SQL Server users. We're going to use the Primavera default of Priv user under our Privileged user or we can use pub user under the public user. The one that you choose will dictate which username and password will be used when you create your alias. We're going to enter our password. If you select it as admin, our password would be admin for our administrative username. You have an option here for your sample data. You can load the sample, sample data. It's going to take some time for the data to load. We found that it's about 30 to 45 minutes to load the sample, sample data. Normally, we just uncheck that box, and we don't want to load that up. You can also select your currency at this point. Do you want it in US dollars or the currency that you would be using to create it? Once we've selected that, we're going to click Install. And now our setup wizard is ready to create the database. The next screenshot is going to show you that the setup wizard has completed the creation of your database. If you've received the three check marks, it has been successful in its creation. If you are not showing the three check marks, there is an issue that you have encountered throughout the course of setting it up. This process can take several minutes, again, depending on the computer that's being loaded into and also any type of connection. From there, we're going to click Next. And then our last process, we can click Next to repeat the process to create an additional database. Or if we are complete, we're just going to select Finish. From here, we're going to go in and we're going to walk you through the processes of connecting to a P6 database. You're going to click on your icon for P6 Pro 15.1. From there, we're going to click on the box to the right of the database field. This is going to be our databases. Once we click on the databases, we're going to, it's going to open up our Edit Database Connection screen. You have an option here to configure your current database, or you can click Add. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new database alias. 
We used the one earlier when we were setting up SQL for PMDB underscore sample. We're going to enter our database alias. We've been using PMDB underscore sample. We're going to select your driver type. In this instance, it's going to be Microsoft SQL Server, SQL Express. We're going to enter local host for the default host name and then enter our database name, still using PMDB underscore sample. When we enter our public login information, if we selected priv user or pub user, that's where we would enter our username and password that we had set up previously. From there, we're gonna click next, and then we go into our validation. We're gonna click next, make sure we validated our database alias and the username, either pub user or priv user. And if you've done all the steps properly, you should get a connection successful. Once we receive that, we're gonna click finish, and our new database will now be listed in our database listing. If you followed all these steps properly and correct, you are now ready to log in and use P6. And as you can see, everything was successful on our end. I'm able to access P6 and all my projects. Our next portion that we're gonna have Adam discuss is connecting to an EPPM database using Oracle Cloud Connect. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, so, then go to the next slide. The setup procedures for uh, using the Oracle Cloud Connector are very, very similar to setting up a SQL database. So, I'm going to take you through setting up um, an EPPM database for Oracle Cloud Connect. There are some key differences, though. Uh, one of them is it has to be set up on a server uh, as it's an EPPM database. In addition to that, it's also an Oracle database which means it's not compatible with SQL or SQL Lite. So to do the uh, Oracle EPPM database setup, you're going to go through the same steps. You're going to click on DB Setup. And again, this happens on the server. And you're going to install a new database. And instead of selecting Microsoft SQL, you're going to select Oracle. And before you get started in doing this, you should know your um, DBA username and password. If you don't know that, uh, typically your IT department should have that uh, if you're doing it internally. And once you have that information, you, you can go ahead and uh, do the connection. So as we had the uh, port 1433 on the SQL side, the Oracle database default port is 1521. So I recommend leaving that the same. It's going to work most of the time if you have some Unique firewall settings, you may need to get with your IT department to find out what ports need to be open, but uh, the database should be, or the database host port should be 1521. And now at this point, you can select your database name. And we go ahead and go to the uh, next one, Dan. So here's where it gets a little bit different. So you have to set up Oracle table spaces. What are shown here on this slide are the default Oracle table spaces. And generally, these are going to work just fine for your setup. So those are what come up as soon as you click on uh, the next and the table space locations. Now you see the uh, C drive on there. This is not your local um, computer C drive. This is a uh, drive actually on a server or in the cloud. So that's something you definitely need to keep in mind. Um, and these again are the default settings uh, when it comes to the table space locations. So go ahead and click next, Dan. This is uh, Actually, one of the last steps uh, as far as setting up the database. So now you click Next, and you get the uh, Create Oracle Table Spaces for P60 PPM, and it establishes the connection. You see there's only one check mark instead of three on this one. Your next step is to set up your administrative passwords and uh, usernames. These are not your production usernames, and so not your name licenses. These are your um, admin users, your privileged users, and public users. Let's see, go ahead and click Next. With this one, you're going to set up your administrative username. Uh, generally, it's admin. Um, most of the uh, default settings are admin for the username, admin for the password. 
but you can select any password you want at this point. And the same as setting up a SQL database, you have the option to load sample data. It does take the same 30 to 45 minutes to load that data. Uh, if you're selecting just a fresh database, you don't have to select the load sample data. You can just load a blank database. So once you uh, enter your admin username and password and select or unselect the load sample data, you finish setting up the database. Um, there are a few more steps involved with setting up the uh, Oracle Cloud database, Oracle Cloud Connect, uh, than there are with setting up the SQL database. Um, where it saves on steps, or you don't have to go in and set up the uh, individual port settings or dynamic settings uh, that you do with SQL. I go ahead and click next, Dan. And at this point, this should look fairly familiar. You're going to access your database. You're going to create um, a new database for you to connect to. So just as you did on the previous one, uh, you're going to click Add. And go ahead and do next, Dan. Your database alias, uh, you can name the same thing you want. We've chosen PMDB underscore cloud as uh, the database alias. The driver type here is P6 Pro Cloud Connect, not SQL, SQL Lite, or Oracle. On the next screen, you're going to enter your uh, database name. The database name for this is actually PMDB underscore demo. Now, the uh, last thing you're going to enter is the URL. And that is generated when you set up the P6 EPPM database. So that's not something that uh, you set up or you pick here. It's something that's generated on the EPPM side. Uh, so you need to make sure you remember what that URL is so you can enter it at this point. Go ahead and click Next, Dan. All right. If you entered everything correctly uh, and you have the URL entered exactly the way it should be, you're going to get a connection successful window. So that means you can now access your database. And once you get that, your database will show up in the list of databases you can access when you log into P6. And that is how you set up an Oracle Cloud database. And then click Next, and that should cover the uh, selection for Oracle Cloud, Dan. Thanks, Adam. Uh, we're coming right to the end, and uh, we want to give you a heads up of uh, upcoming webinars. Uh, next month on June 17th, we're going to do, we're going to expand on working with databases in P6 Professional 15.1. Uh, we've put, set the abstract here. Uh, Adam will be presenting on that. We've also included a link for the registration if you want to register directly through the slide deck. Uh, if you do receive our newsletter, there just went out yesterday. There was also an article in there and the registration link in there as well, too. Questions. We'll go into the questions tab, see if anybody submitted any questions. Again, uh, like I said in the beginning, all questions are going to be gathered into a master sheet. We're going to create a Q&A log. If you think of any questions uh, that you would want to ask either myself or Adam, our contact information is right on the bottom of the slide. You can email us your question, inquiries, uh, problems, experiences. We're here to help at any point. Uh, Let's see. First question, if we are running, say, CM13.1 that requires an older version of Java, and now we want to install P6 Pro 15.1 that needs a newer version of Java, can these two coexist? And if so, will it auto-select the Java required for each application? Adam? I don't believe it auto selects the uh, correct Java version. Um, using uh, the correct Java version for EPPM can be a, a bit of a challenge at times. Uh, one of the, the best ways to do that is to have a separate environment that you're running P6 on where you can have a standalone version of Java. That's the uh, best way that, that I've gotten around it in the past. Uh, hopefully that answers it, but uh, running two versions of Java is not uh, something that I would recommend doing personally. Next question that came in, does version 15.1 have Claim Digger? Uh, 
Adam, have you uh, been into Claim Digger yet on 15.1? I have not been into Claim Digger. Have you seen it in that one, Dan? I know if you load SQLite, SQLite database does not include Claim Digger. That's one of the limitations that SQLite has when it comes to Pro. On the slide that we previously showed, it'll show you what is not included with SQLite. It does have some limitations. That's all the questions that were submitted through the question log. Again, if anybody has any additional questions or inquiries, uh, please feel free to uh, email them either to myself or to Adam. Uh, upcoming events, uh, AAC International, the annual meeting is July 20, or June 28th through July 1st in Vegas. And if you have not registered and would like to receive our monthly e newsletter, you can sign up for it through our website. Just go to the loop. Uh, it'll keep you up to date on all the new updates, products, webinars, any type of news uh, regarding Primavera and its applications. Uh, we try and keep uh, the most current information possible on the loop. So if you're interested, you can go to our website and sign up. Uh, we hope to see you all next month on next month's webinar. Again, if there are any inquiries or questions, please feel free to email them to us at any time. Thank you for attending today.